Today, we're gonna to dive into some even more detailed tips in rerouting Contact Studio Drummer in Logic Pro X. So this is gonna let you have more control of mixing. If you haven't watched this first video already, that's where we talk more in general about how do you use Logic's mixer board for your different drums instead of just relying on the outputs from Contact itself. So if you haven't watched this video yet, do that first and then come back here and I'll show more of the uh, individual drum mic rerouting so that you have even more control as you're mixing that contact drum set in Logic Pro X. So without further ado, let's dive in here and we'll see that we have our studio drummer pulled up and I have everything already set up here so that it's going into separate Logic tracks. You can see all the separate logic channels that we're using on the mixer board here so that I have full control over each of those hits and I can use all my plugins and mix them here. That's what we did in that other video I mentioned earlier. The next thing that we're gonna look into now is that may not be exactly the sound that you're looking for right off the bat. So for example, the one we're gonna look through today is this hi-hat and on this hi-hat here, you can see I haven't yet rerouted that. Um, so we'll do that really quickly just to show the difference. So right now it's just going to the master output, which means all the processing is happening on the contact end right now. And when I change this into my hi-hat output, it's got a little different sound. And <clears throat> the other thing that's uh, that it's doing that's even more noticeable is once I start to take down some of the other mics that I'm using uh, that I might not want to use as much. For example, the um, uh, we'll mute the main output there and also the overhead mics, just so you can see where that sound's actually coming from. You can see, despite my volume being at the same level as everything else, my hi-hat mic here is not, doesn't have nearly enough of that power or gain or just anything that I want to actually mix since so much of it's relying on the overhead and room mics from contact. So in order to fix that, we can go into contact here. And instead of looking at just the mixing board, because that's where we already fixed the output here, I'm going to go into my group editor and this is where I can see all of the individual, um, you know, drum hits and, and where it's taking the samples from. So I'm going to go to this direct hi-hat and make sure you do not have edit all groups on. Um, I just want to have direct hi-hat selected. And when I play it, just to kind of show you what's going on here, I'll go down to my instrument buses and you can see that one sound is going to a couple different places. It's going to my direct hi-hat mic, it's going to some of the overhead mics over here that are, or the overhead bus over here. And to change this, so again, when I'm muting all those things in Logic, I'll mute overhead stereo, mute, uh, mute the room stereo, and mute overhead mono, it's super light and so all I'm gonna do is just click on that bus that it's going to. And the reason I knew it was bus three other than the, <laughs> the sound showing up there is when I click on that direct hi-hat and I look at its channel routing, I can see that it's going to bus three. So that's how I know to go to bus three here and I can just ease that output until it's something that it's easier to work with. So once you have that to the right level, you're just getting enough signal now to actually use it. Um, you can go about playing it like you normally would in Logic and look, mixing there. The thing I used to do, so this is just uh, another rerouting thing that you can do, but that I wouldn't necessarily recommend in, uh, in most cases. I could have changed that direct hi-hat mic output to be directly to my hi-hat. 
So I could have changed the routing at that level versus at the bus level here. And the reason I don't do that anymore is because um, if we go back to our, oops, if we go back to our mixer board here, that would basically, uh, it would bypass any of the, some of the processing that um, I might actually want happening in my uh, channel here in contact. And so any of the EQ boosts or um, in this case, compression or, or tape saturation that's happening in contact um, that kind of makes it feel like a kit there, which is also happening on some of these other, um, on these other channels, on these other uh, faders here in contact. By keeping that mic going through bus three, it allows it to still do some of the processing in contact. If I wanted to bypass all of it completely, then yeah, I could have gone into the group editor and changed the output there um, to the output in Logic directly. Or um, what I would actually say is a better route in that scenario, just to make it easier, because otherwise you're gonna have to reroute all of those. Like to do it right, you would probably want to reroute like all of these, and that would just be a pain in the butt. Um, so the easier way I would think to do it is instead still route it the way that I showed initially by changing that, uh, that bus three instrument bus output to, uh, just increasing the gain there. And then if you didn't like these processing pieces and wanted to do it all in logic, just turn them off here. Just turn them off here instead. That way you still get the benefit of kind of having them nicely grouped from the mixing board here and, and having this correspond uh, directly to your outputs that you set up in Logic. You're basically representing this mixing board as your new tracks in Logic. So again, just to recap this more detailed little tip here, it's mainly just going into that group editor, being able to see and click around where each of these individual sounds is being routed to for that channel routing. And then once I see that it's in bus three, I can see where uh, each of those instrument buses here, click on each one and see where the levels are at. And if I'm not getting enough signal going into logic at this point, which I wasn't before, I'm going to go ahead and bring that output up. So before, you know, is at negative seven and a half. So I just brought it way up so that it's coming into logic stronger. The reason that we're doing that in this case is just because when I'm mixing, I may not, I may not want all of that stereo, um, or even just the mono sound that I'm getting because that's going to include other instrument sounds. I want the ability to have that more soloed, um, you know, more isolated hi-hat sound that I can work with in Logic, where if I want to treat that hi-hat separately from the other sounds that are going on in the kit, I now have the ability to do that on my hi-hat mic versus before if I was trying to, re uh, on that hi-hat channel, I should say, um, I before I, without changing that gain output and trying to um, do that just with the overhead mono or overhead stereo, uh, or room stereo, the other channels where that hi-hat's coming through a lot. So you can still see even when I mute that hi-hat channel, I'm still getting tons of signal here. A lot of times when I'm mixing, I'm bringing these way down anyway. And that's just not an, it just wouldn't have been enough signal to work with. Because now in Logic, instead of relying on the room and overhead and uh, everything here from contact for creating that sense of space for the kit. I'm usually going to end up sending uh, sending each of these individual channels first of all to a a bus where I'm doing some master some uh, drum bus processing on the kit as a whole, some overall compression and uh, just EQ and any taming that I want to happen there. And then I'm also going to send each of these to uh, to different effects like reverbs, uh, slap delays, anything like that where I'm going to, um, I want to control that effect and sense of space in my logic mixer board 
not relying solely on that overhead mic and uh, room mic that I'm getting from contact. That's just the way I prefer to do it and why I'm going into those routing details. Um, but if you like the way it sounds directly out of contact, then uh, and you're and you're more familiar with working with the the mixer board and everything set up and everything that's set up here, go ahead and do that. And you know you don't have to do all that processing and logic. That's that's just what I prefer to do. So again, this is something that. I wanted to share because it took me a while to figure out, um, you know, what's what was kind of happening as I was trying to figure out how to get the sounds I wanted uh, with contact and logic. So hopefully you find that helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions on it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, lastly, I kind of skipped the intro here, but I'm Marcus, aka Cradle Cat. So uh, if you liked this video, please go ahead and subscribe. Or if you just want to follow my music or other videos on music production like this one, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Spotify and you can stay up to date with anything else that I'm sharing on my end. Thanks for taking the time to watch this and I'll see you next time.